Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent, who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, while today, Wednesday, is usually our school mass, uh, we'll do that on Friday this week because, or our uh, close as school mass as we can, uh, because this week would have been uh, Grandparents' Day and we would have celebrated school mass on Friday uh, this week with our grandparents. And so uh, we'll do that in a couple of days. But today we celebrate the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, who is a virgin and a doctor of the church. And we'll reflect a little bit more on her and her life uh, after the gospel. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church. Entering house after house and dragging out men and women, he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they, when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Amen. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass this morning, St. Catherine of Siena is our saint of the day, our memorial for today, and she uh, there's so much about her life. One of these saints that in a, in a relatively short lifetime uh, did far more than any of us could ever imagine doing. Uh, I did learn today as I was reading a little bit about her, I was trying to refresh my memory uh, about a few things, uh, that she was born in the, uh, in the 1300s uh, in Siena, of course, at the time uh, when there was an outbreak of the plague in the city. And so I think uh, she, um, she's a good intercessor for us in this time where we are uh, combating our own pandemic. But she was uh, in a part of a large family, very large family. I can't remember the exact number at the moment, but I believe it was 20 or 25 children, although because of the plague and other things, uh, only about half of them lived to adulthood. And I, she may have been the youngest. She was a twin. It did say that. Uh, but her twin uh, died very young. Um, so Catherine of Siena um, grew up in that city of Siena. And uh, I had thought for, for, I guess, lack of looking it up and, and understanding it better, that she uh, had entered into religious life, that she became a nun. Uh, and that's not actually the case. She remained, uh, she remained a laywoman um, and... Uh, she was part of the third order Dominicans, which are those third orders refer to those who associate themselves with the religious order, but do not uh, enter it and take vows in the same way. So perhaps that's where I got that impression. But um, as, as, a, as, a, um, as a saint, there are two things that, that stood out to me uh, today. And one kind of falls in the weird Catholic stuff category. So, um, St. Catherine of Siena's body is, is incorrupt and, uh, and there are parts of it in different places, which is part of the weird Catholic stuff. I've actually been to Siena to the church where some of her remains are, are, are kept. Um, they have her head there and they also have one of her index fingers, which seems again, very weird and that's uh, one of these weird Catholic things, but it comes from something that she's, she's well known for doing. And it is that at the time, the popes were in, uh, not in Rome, but they were in Avignon, France. Um, it was kind of a, I'm not the greatest student of history, but it was kind of a self-imposed exile. Uh, there certainly were things that forced them or, or, or contributed to forcing them from Rome, but then it became something where they, they found it easier and more comfortable in, in, in Avignon than in Rome, and they were neglecting in some ways their responsibility to lead uh, not only the church uh, spiritually, but there was also political aspects to, um, 
to being the Pope more so at that time than now because Rome was, uh, was a city state and the Pope was the ruler of it. So, um, and so Catherine of Siena was one who, who was insistent in urging the popes to return to Rome and to return to what they, uh, their responsibilities were. And, uh, and so the story is that's why they have her finger there because she was always pointing to them, go back to Rome, <laughs> go back to Rome. Uh, so that's one defile into the, the weird Catholic stuff sort of thing, a, a finger of a saint on display in a church. But on a, on a more spiritual level and related, I think, to our, our gospel today, um, St. Catherine of Siena was, was given the grace of great mystical experiences. From a, from a young age, she had uh, this intimate union with Christ, which she herself described as a mystical marriage with Christ. And it gave her uh, a familiarity with him that uh, exceeds what most of us experience. Um, there's one example, I was trying to confirm it uh, because I think it's her and I'm not positive, um, but I think if memory serves, it was her, where because of that, that mystical union with Christ, for instance, when she would pray the glory be, she would say glory be to the Father and to you and to the Holy Spirit. She prayed as if she was speaking, like Jesus was right there, right? Uh, and as she, if she was speaking to him. And I think that that has significance for us, uh, even though we uh, don't necessarily have that same mystical experience. Sometimes uh, that sort of way of addressing the Lord can help us in our faith. And I think in particular with the Holy Eucharist, we keep reading from the sixth chapter of John in the gospel and Jesus speaking about he, how he is the bread of life come down from heaven. Um, and sometimes we get used to speaking of the Eucharist as it, as something, right? And I think it's helpful to us, even if we don't have that mystical experience, to speak of the Eucharist as someone, to speak of it as Jesus, to refer to it that way, See, there I go, refer to it, to refer to him that way, right? To, in our language, be intentional about uh, substituting Jesus sometimes for the Eucharist. Like, I got to receive Jesus, not just Holy Communion, not just the Eucharist, that's all that's true, but to put, to put the name of Jesus in there and refer to him in that way. And that helps remind us and it helps foster our faith in his presence in the Eucharist. So, so many things we could ask for St. Catherine's intercession today, but we thank the Lord God for this great model of holiness, um, this great intercessor, and this one who had such great union with his son, Jesus. Trusting in our Heavenly Father, let us bring our prayers and needs before Him. Let us pray for the Church. We pray that the Church may experience an increase in devotion and faith in the real presence of Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our world. We pray uh, that the global pandemic, that God would grant a swift end to it, and that our leaders and nations may work together uh, for the common good and the, the public health of all. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for all those most affected by the pandemic, those who are ill themselves, those who care for those who are sick, those who are researching uh, treatments and cures for it, uh, those who uh, put themselves at risk to serve others in any sort of way, those who have uh, lost or have reduced employment as a result. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who have died. We pray that they may be raised up to glory in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, listen in love to the cries of your people and hear these prayers which we bring before you today. 
Answer them according to your will, for we make them in the name of your Son, Jesus the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, Andrew his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls, Amen.